Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, no matter where you may be in the world. And like we always do at this time, swoosh. <laughs> What's up, everybody? States, and I am the steward leader of the Gazelle Ministry, which is based on Proverbs 6 and 5. And I'm here at Juneteenth Education Technology Mobile Arts Center Headquarters here in Fontana, California. And Proverbs 6 and 5 says, Deliver yourself like a gazelle from the hand of the hunter and like a bird from the snare of the fowler. So why does God tell us to deliver yourself? Why does he say to do it like a gazelle? And who is the hunter whose hand we need to deliver ourselves from? And what type of bird is he saying that we should fly like to stay out of snares and traps? Well, that all boils down to one question. How can I become a better leader? And that's where our daily leadership video blog series called How to Increase Your Influence God's Way deals with. But today is all about visionary leadership. And this video series is dedicated to a fallen comrade of mine who we lost too soon. Pastor Terrence Wingo and his beloved and bereaved wife and family. So let's get it in. Now this teaching is going to come from Dr. Miles Monroe's book called The Principles and Power of Vision, Keys to Achieving Personal and Corporate Destiny. So let's talk about vision for a second, okay? Vision is a conception that is inspired by God in the heart of a human. The greatest gift God ever gave humanity is not sight, but vision. See, sight is a function of the eyes, but vision is a function of the heart. You can have sight, but no vision. Now, throughout history, progress has been made only by people who have seen things that were not yet here. Vision is seeing the future before it becomes into being. It is a mental picture of your destiny. See, God gave humanity the gift of vision. We would not only have to live by what we see. Now, let's get to today's message, which is, you were born to be distinct and born with a unique vision. So, do you know that you were not created to be normal? <laughs> you were designed by God to blend in. No, you were designed by God to stand out. I'm going to say that again. You were designed by God to blend in. No. You were designed by God to stand out. Now think of the thousands of kinds of flowers in the world. They are all flowers, but each one is unique in its species. Think of a forest. At first glance, the trees all seem to blend together. When you get closer, however, you'll see that the shape of each tree is unique. Every type of tree has leaves with a distinct design. Why? Uniqueness is part of God's plan. Uniqueness is part of God's creation. See, individual design is as true of humanity as it is of nature. God doesn't want any one person to get lost in the midst of everyone else. See, there are over 6 billion people on the planet, and not one of them has your fingerprints. Now, we can become complacent about this astonishing truth, yet it is something that we must continually remind ourselves of, since it's easy to feel lost in the crowd. Now, some people may consider you to be just another person, but they're wrong. Don't ever allow yourself, don't ever allow anyone to cause you to think of yourself as ordinary, if anyone makes you feel less than you are, just look in the mirror and say, you original thing you. You are one of a kind, irreplaceable, original. There is no one else like you on the earth. And God made you that way because he wanted you to be perpetually rare. See, in economic terms, the value of something is determined by how rare it is. For example, real pearls are costly because they're found only in a small number of shells and they must be searched for. When you buy a real diamond, it's expensive because no two diamonds in the world are alike. Gold is costly 
because it's difficult to find. It is the same way with oil. It does not usually just spring up in your backyard, right? So you generally have to dig deep to find it. Similarly, God wanted you to be perpetually valuable. So guess what? He made you permanently rare. <laughs> he created you as one of a kind. And so if you go to a store, at a discount store, and you go to a sale, you'll notice that many of the dresses, the sports coats, or the ties on the racks are just alike. You'll see 20 items of clothing with the same pattern and color. They're inexpensive because they were mass produced. So if you want an original dress, you have to go to a designer. You are not mass produced clothing. God has not placed you on a sale rack. You are designer made. Now, you were also born with a unique vision. See, God not only created each person on earth with a distinct design, but he also placed in everyone a unique vision. See, no person can give you this vision. See, there's a difference between your job and your work. Your job is what you are paid to do, but your work is not only what you get paid to do, but it's what you were born to do. No person can give you this vision. It is only God given. You can go to as many seminars as you want and receive all kinds of wonderful instruction like I do. But no one except God gives you the idea that you were born to fulfill. The poor man, the rich man, the black man, the white man, every person has a dream in his heart, right? Now, your vision may already be clear to you or it may be buried somewhere deep in your heart waiting to be discovered. But fulfilling this dream is what gives purpose and meaning to life. So in other words, the very substance of life is for you to find God's purpose and fulfill it. And until you do that, you're not really living. See, God has given a dream and a vision to you that's supposed to carry you right out into eternity because that's what's pulling it. See, when you die, you're not meant to leave this earth on a pension but on a purpose. See, you need to make sure that you can say at the end of your life, as Jesus did, it is finished and not just I'm retired. See, your dream is much bigger than retirement. Jesus said, for this reason, I was born. And for this, I came into the world to testify the truth. Now, you must have a clear vision for your life as Jesus did. I know what mine is, like Dr. Monroe born to raise up leaders and to train them so they can impact their entire nations for generations to come. That is my reason for living. I was born to inspire and draw out the hidden leader in every human being I meet. When you're around me, suddenly you're going to feel good about yourself. If you stay around me long enough, you'll start being your true self. Why? I was born for that. I was wired for that. So here's today's question for reflection. What has God wired you for? Well, like we always say at this time, I sit at the top because the bottom is way too crowded. And like we always do at this time for my brand Gazelle and my Gazelle business partners and my Gazelle ministry. Swoosh. <laughs> and I'm out. Bye for now. See you tomorrow.